Okay, good afternoon. Today we're going to discuss chapter nine, which is sources of capital, capital, or sources of equity, capital. And here we're going to talk about common stock, treasury stock, preferred stock, dividends, earnings per share. So let's now begin with problem 9-1. The following information was taken from the balance sheet of Larry B. Company. Amounts are in thousands of dollars. Current liabilities, long-term debt, common stock, paid in capital, retained earnings. So what are we being asked here? Calculate the debt over equity, the debt equity ratio, and the debt capitalization ratios. What do these ratios measure? Okay, debt equity ratio is basically debt over equity. The current liabilities of 24,480 plus long-term liabilities of 73,440 or that is 0, 2, 5, uh, 9, 3, 7, um, 9. 97, 920 over total current liability, which is basically capital stock plus return earnings plus paid in capital. Okay, so that is 61,200. Let us already calculate here to be faster. Plus paid in capital of 15,300 plus 70,380 of retained earnings. So that is 146,880, and that is 66.67%. Long-term debt over long-term debt plus um, stockholders' equity. 73,440 plus the current portion of the long-term debt is 6,120. 79,560 over... Long-term debt, we already know, 79,560 plus this one, 35.13%. Okay, so what do these ratios mean for us? Debt-to-equity ratio would say that for every dollar that is given by the stockholders, 60 cents are given or 66 cents are given by the uh, creditors. And here, as regards the capitalization, for everyone who owns the business, the stockholders, and the creditors, um, the ones who give us long-term debt, 35% is coming from the outside creditors, and 65% um, is coming from the stockholders themselves. Is that good or bad? Depends on the industry. Depends on really your vision of the company. If you really wanted just a little bit of debt to help uh, finance the business. Let's go to 9-2. It says, okay, let's see the requirement. Calculate the company's basic earnings per share. So how do you calculate earnings per share? We will put it here. Calculate the company's diluted earnings per share. So during its fiscal year, Mori Corporation had outstanding 600,000 shares at 6.5 preferred stock and 2 million shares of common stock. Morris' net income for the year was 19550 We need that. The company also had granted stock options to employees for 200,000 shares of common stock at 10 per share, per share, which is the exercise price. It's like, I think, 20. The average price is 20 per share. So calculate earnings per share. What do we need? We need net income. We need um, preferred stock dividends because we have to um, re reduce the net income by this to be shared by the common the number of uh, common shares. 19,550,000, 6.5, which is basically what you will give them as dividends multiplied by 3.99. So earnings per share, 
would therefore be 19.550 million less 3.9 million over 2 million common shares. That is okay. And now we're being asked for the diluted earnings per share. Diluted earnings per share is another measurement of a corporation's per share performance. The amount of earnings for the period applicable to each share of common stock outstanding adjusted to reflect dilution, which is lower earnings per share, assuming all potentially dilutive common shares were outstanding, outstanding during the period. Potentially dilutive common stock shares include stock options. Okay, so going back to the problem, what has been um, affecting common shares? The company also had granted stock options to employees for 200,000 shares of common stock at 10 per share. So there is like a possibility that 200,000 shares will be exercised, but still is not, um, it didn't say that all the 200,000 shares were issued, okay? Over 2 million plus 100,000 shares. Okay, so what does it mean, dilution? is because there are more uh, shares out there the earnings per share is minimized because there are more um, common stocks outstanding. Okay, the question is where did I get one hundred thousand? Because basically the problem is telling us that it was offered. We we don't know if uh, the full amount has been um, issued. Okay, so now let's go to problem nine dash five. The owner's equity section of the balance sheet of Oblob Corporation on December 31, 2009 was as follows. $8 preferred stock, 40,000 shares, par value 100, which means they're going to earn $8 uh, dividends. This is equivalent to $4 million. Okay. Common stock, no par value, 5 million shares issued and outstanding is $21 million. Okay, retained earnings, 7 million, total owner's equity, 32 million. The board of directors took the following actions. December 31, 2010, a 2 for one stock split of common stock was declared. So there would be now 10 million shares outstanding. Okay, because for every one, you give two. And then 12,000 shares of its outstanding preferred stock were purchased by Oblo at 114 per share. So that means it's taken back to be there in treasury. So how do we record this buying back of outstanding preferred stock? So that is basically, we bought it back, we put it in treasury. That is a debit. So the cash that we have um, given out is 114 times 12,000. So that's 1368. And then it's the same, 1368, basically telling us how much did we buy back our share. So there is no income or loss. Another way to um, look at treasury stock, why is it a debit, is because it is a contra equity account against an equity account. So you reduce the common stocks, you reduce equity by the treasury stocks. And why am I saying that there is no gain or loss here? We record treasury stock at the cost that we have purchased it. Okay, and then January 1, 2011, the preferred dividend of eight was declared. The preferred dividend of eight was declared. So this is the date of declaration. We are going to record a deduction in retained earnings. Preferred dividends payable. How much would that be? 40,000 less 12,000 outstanding would be 28,000 times eight. So that is 224,000. Okay, did you get that? The dividend is a reduction in retained earnings. At the date of declaration, we only record a payable of preferred dividends. A cash dividend of 0.15 a share on common stock outstanding on January 1 was declared. So this is um, a reduction in retained earnings.
and then common dividends payable. So that is 0.15 a share on common stock outstanding. So remember we had the stock split. So we now have instead of 5 million shares because of the two, um, two for one stock split, we now have 10 million shares. And then that is 10 million times 0 0.15, 1,500,000. Okay, and then a stock dividend of one tenth of a share was declared on common stock effective February 1. So what has been our um, common stock is 10 million, but basically still 21 million in value. So if you declare one tenth of that, that will be 2,100,000. Okay, during the time I post this, I actually already wrote the entry for February 1. 2011, we have actually paid out. It says the dividends declared in January were paid. So I only included preferred dividends payable of 224,000, common dividends payable of 1,500,000, okay? And uh, supposedly this is paid in cash. I did not include common stock dividends distributable. If that were the case, uh, but that is not the case, it's really paid didn't say that the common stocks were distributed. So, okay, so I'm just using this entry, okay? So I think with that, you were able to understand a little bit more about uh, the changes in the stockholders' equity section when it comes to paying out dividends, paying out uh, preferred stock dividends, getting back from the market. So putting it back to our treasury, and that is our treasury stock. And that's it. This is all the dividends um, payable at the moment of declaration. And then at the moment of paying out already the dividends, we, we debit the payable and credit to cash. Okay, so I think with that, we already learned a little bit more about the sources of equity, the source of equity, which is capital. Okay.